teaching for 33 years so I've had a lot of players adults and juniors come off the court when I watched them play either in USTA teams or junior matches or whatnot and often they would complain about the style of player that just beat them and there's a few notorious styles that are tough to play against okay uh, and I would hear this story all the time man I can't believe it I played this push yeah, he's, he suck. It wasn't even tennis. Okay, it was horrible. And they were playing a moon baller, okay? Uh, I had many conversations with, like, perhaps a, a man from my men's team. Dude, this guy, he's just a hacker. He just hacked me to death. Hack fest. It wasn't even tennis. Okay? Um, this other guy, man, he just drop shot at me. We didn't even get a rally going. It was just a drop shot festival. That was a joke. Okay? And it dawned on me, I got fairly frustrated because many times I'd be watching, and sure enough, these things were happening to my students. And I, for many years, I thought, wow, what's wrong with me as a coach that my, oh, my personal students are suffering this demise all the time? Well, then I realized that it's not just my students. Everybody hates playing those styles. So here's what I found out. Many times when my students were behind, okay, um, they're only, I'm going to use my hands here for a second. Let's say uh, this is me. I'm playing at this level today. And my opponent, unfortunately, is a, a notch up. Okay, so here we are. He's playing, I'm playing 5-0 or, or whatever. I'm playing 4 oak level. He's playing 4-5 at the moment. It's 1-4 in, in the first set. And I'm behind. I'm playing a little worse. My theory from just, it's not scientific, it's just what I've seen is that almost always, nearly 100% of the time, when a player finds himself in this predicament, they try to raise their level, right? They're not gonna try to lower the level. They're gonna try to raise their level. That's the only thing that occurs to them. And how do most players try to raise their level? What do they try to deploy? They try to hit harder. They try to go for more winners. They get a little more aggressive. And in many cases, they're good enough to do a, so they, they will have a few more winners, but in the process, they had just as many losers, and they stall out. And then they lose. And then they come off, and they're complaining. So years ago, maybe five to seven years ago, I coined the phrase sabotage with one of my players, and it stuck, so then I'm starting to use it a lot. So it was basically a paradigm shift, trying to get my players, when you're behind, this is, should not be your first option. This is freaking hard to do. If, it, if you could do it easily, you'd probably already be doing it. Okay, because very few people go, all right, I'm gonna play Will Hamilton today. I'm gonna try 70%. And then if I have to, I'll ramp it up. No one does that. Everybody comes out and tries to do their best. All right, again, remember you're in this scenario. So the other thing that could happen is rather than me raise my level, is that I, pull, I deploy some sabotage to lower their level. It's the other option. I personally found that none of my students ever thought that way. That was just too much of a paradigm shift. Oh, wow, what? So as we talk about this, I said, wouldn't that be the same thing? You know, you just want to get closer, you can hang in there, maybe they fold under pressure. You want to keep it close? Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. So then I had some buy-in. So then I have to say, okay, how do I teach sabotage? Because a lot of the things that we talked about, moon balling, slicing and hacking, drop shotting, those are classic sabotage skills. And a lot of people don't want to learn them. It's almost like, I don't need that in my arsenal, dude. Do you realize how good I am? <laughs> I don't need all your little sabotage bull crap over here. You know, I'm going to play sweet tennis all the time. But here's the problem. Does Federer have a drop shot? Will he slice at times? Does Rafa move ball a lot? It's good enough for them, so it should be good enough for us. But here's the deal. Of all the years in coaching, 33 years, I never heard a person come off the court, one of my students, and say, man, I just played this moon baller, dude. I got to tell you, I was on fire. You should have seen me. Why can't everybody be a moon baller? I just love playing the moon ballers. Zero for one billion on my career, okay? I never heard a player come off and say, you know, today I was playing this dude. He tried to hack me to death. And dude, did I roll him. He was just dying. I, he was keeping it low. I was ripping these top spins. I just loved it. 
Never heard that in my whole life. Never heard that. I've never shown up to a tournament and have a kid look at the draw and say, oh, look who I got to play. Ryan Duchesne, the known slicer hacker. Dude, I got this. Okay, so instead of my people always being the victim and, and so, you know, vulnerable to this stuff, I thought, well, I want to teach some of this stuff so maybe my people can dish it out the other way and screw those other people up. Okay, so my point is this. A lot of people, when they're behind, their only option is this. So you have to have a different option. If this works for you, then go for it. I suspect if you're behind and you're trying to raise your level, eight out of 10 times, that won't work for you. You'll stall out. So these other shots that are very respectable, slicing, the ability to add slice, the ability to lob, the ability to hit drop shots. To this day, I'm not sure, this is a pet peeve of mine. When I have a kids, I'll coach a kid, they play in Michigan, you probably play in your career 100 high school tennis matches, about 25 matches a year, okay? And I was just telling this to a group of our players. 100 matches, and probably the opponents, I'm talking singles right now, 100 out of 100 of those players would prefer to play from the baseline. That's not a, an unrealistic thing. I've never seen in recent years a player in high school level or rec player, three, five, whatever, that's like predominantly trying to get in. Most people these days play from the baseline. Uh, so when I, uh, Mar this is my wife, Marty. Hi, Marty. <laughs> uh, we have a daughter that just finished college a couple years ago. Uh, the very first shot we taught her was what? A drop shot, slice, volleys, boom balls, okay? If you watch my daughter, you probably see her in some videos. She's not the very hardest hitter. She graduates a D13 national rank program with the most doubles wins in the history of the school, of the whole history of, of the school. Gets her win. She's really good at sabotage. If you watch her hit her serve, she's going to flatten out at 62 miles an hour, baby. That's about it. She never had a lot of power. So it's just a paradigm shift that I want to share with you. I had a lot of success with my players trying to just get them off of that model and over here and just adding it. You don't have to spend the whole, you, listen to me carefully. I am not saying you should all become slicer hackers, moon ballers, drop shotters, but I am saying you should have those in your arsenal so that when you need them and you're playing and it's just not going well, you can pull these out. And I'll end with this. Having it in your arsenal means that you can actually deploy it. <laughs> I have a, if I have 36 kids in my elite class, I say, who can serve a volley? 36 hands go up. Yeah, they know what, they can do it. If I aim a gun at them and say, serve volley, they'll serve volley. But the question is, would they deploy it at 4-4 in the third set? Or would they be like, ah, uh, dude, I'm not good, not now. I mean, I'll serve volley, but not now, because they really don't own it. Okay, so the real measure I like to use is 4-4 in the third. Anything you dare to try at 4-4 in the third, you own it. That's inside your arsenal, you can go to war with it. So, that was my whole idea. The word sabotage is unique, but I do think at my club I've had a lot of players buy in, and they're winning matches that they never used to win. And I'll tell you, if you can just turn around one match where you're behind and you deploy a little sabotage and you win, you'll be addicted because it's fun. All right, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Woo